Okay, we'll uh, we'll get started. So you should have uh, seen your midterm score graded, uh, and well, I graded the midterms and I posted your scores, and so everybody should be able to view their midterm score on CCLE. Okay, there there were a total of 31 questions and a bonus for. You could have gotten up to 32 questions correct, and you know I took your score and I divided by 31, and that was your your score. The median was 87 percent. That's uh, it's like 27 correct. Q1 was 25 correct, so that's around an 81 percent, and Q3 was 93 point 93 and a half percent. So that was overall the uh, the class performance was uh, very good. So I'm I'm quite uh, happy to see with that. I do want to just say a little bit, and this is mostly, uh, and this is for everybody in the uh, the bottom quartile. Okay, so anybody who uh, who's kind of in that bottom twenty five percent, I know it's not fun to be there. I know it it kind of feels bad to be in Q one, and I want to say it's okay. It's okay. You know, it could have just been a bad day. It could have been uh, you know a few questions that for whatever reason, just threw you off. Um, don't feel bad. There's, this was just one small test in, uh, in the entire course, and it's just one course, and it's just one, one quarter in your life. So um, even if you did poorly on this exam, you can always do better in the future, okay? And I'm, and I'm confident that many of you will. And, uh, and on the, also, on the other hand, if... Uh, if you feel like you're struggling in the course for whatever reason, whether it be, um, you know, just something where the material is not clicking or, you know, other things are going on in your, in your life, um, please don't hesitate to, um, to seek out help. I'm happy to help you and answer your questions during office hours. Uh, you also have a, a room full of classmates, and I'm sure uh, many of them would be uh, willing to help, uh, help you as well. And... Um, and you know, if, uh, if any of you are struggling with any kind of mental health issues, just because I know uh, as the quarter goes on, uh, stress and anxieties can, uh, can increase, you know, uh, we do have resources on campus uh, to, uh, to help, help there, okay? And uh, you know, sometimes they get really crowded and so you just, you might have to be patient uh, with, with getting in a, an appointment scheduled, but, but there are resources uh, available uh, as well. You are not uh, alone. You don't have to suffer by yourself, even if uh, sometimes you feel like um, that might be the case. Okay, that it's it's not. So, and then you know, for everyone else who's uh, doing uh, well in the course and doing better, uh, you know, please just be willing and make yourself available to help uh, other students who uh, may be struggling. Okay, that's uh, you know. Um, Right now, you might be on one side or the other, and so if you are on the uh, the side that is doing well, it's um, I encourage you guys to uh, to help those uh, who might be uh, who might be struggling or in need. So um, anyway, um, some of you guys have emailed me about seeing your exam. You guys are more than welcome to uh, to come visit me during office hours to uh, to see your exam. I'll have office hours on Wednesday, okay, from uh, 11 to noon. Uh, again, it's most helpful if you send me an email in advance. I can have your exam ready uh, rather than have to uh, comb through the uh, the stack of exams trying to find yours. So, um, also, um, and on the uh, on the comments in the uh, grade, there, it should tell you you know which questions you got wrong and which version you had and things like that. So I would say you know make sure you bring that information so that when you come to uh, office hours and look at your exam, you know where to look, okay? Because uh, the exams, they're not marked up. They, you know, I feed them into the computer and the computer um, grades them, okay? So, th so they're, they're not marked up. Okay, um, you guys have a quiz tomorrow? <laughs> I know it's like you just took the exam and now you have a quiz, okay? Well, it's, 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 it's a quiz, so it's lower stakes, so don't, um, you know, don't, don't freak out too much about it. Um, I'll, uh, I'll cover some stuff. Uh, well, let, let's just talk a little bit about the, uh, the quiz. The quiz is going to cover Chapter 5 and only Chapter 5, okay? So the quiz will be uh, Chapter 5 only, okay? So it's just probability. 
And I will finish up chapter five today, so some of the stuff from today will also appear on the quiz as well. Okay, um, but for example, um, let's see, you know, I, I might set up, a, I might give you a table that looks like this. And it will say, you know, um, this is A and this is not A and this is B and this is not B, okay, whatever, whatever those numbers are, okay, and then, you know, you've got 10 and 20 and 30 and 60 or something like that, okay. And then I could ask you, you know, there might be questions such as, you know, what's the probability of A or what's the probability of not A? I think these are all fair game questions. What's the, uh, the probability of B given A? What's the probability of A given B? What's the probability of A and B? Or what's the probability of A or B? Okay, all of these we should be able to do, I hope. Okay, and of course, you know, it might be A, it might be not A, it might be, you know, any kind of combination of these. Okay. Uh, you should also be able to check um, to see if events A and B are independent. Now, how, how can we go about checking to see if events A and B are independent? What do we check? We check is probability of A given B, is this equal to what? To what? P of A, probability of A, okay? And, uh, and if the answer is yes, then independent. <coughs> And if the answer is no, then not independent. Yes, question. Do you, do you have to check the reverse? Okay, uh, and the answer is no. If, if whatever conclusion you come to here, you can also check, I'll say you can also check probability of B given A is that equal to probability of B, right? Okay. You can also check this, but you, it will lead you to the same conclusion. Okay. So you really only have to check one or the other. Is that okay? And then, you know, if I give you statements, you know, if I make statements, you should also be able to kind of create your own table to, uh, to answer questions. calculations. <coughs> okay, and then, uh, and, and yes, today I will cover a little bit more on chapter five probability, um, mostly kind of sequences of events and, you know, how we go about uh, finding those answers, and, uh, and that will also uh, make an appearance. I'll, I'll, 
I guess I'll put a little star next to the uh, the contents that uh, that you should you should know. Okay, are there any uh, questions before I go on? Okay. Okay, so we have a we have a few and rules for probability. Okay. And, and so, you know, if you're given a table, you can often just look at the, uh, the intersection of these two conditions or two, uh, two things, two properties, and that will give you the and, right? So, for example, on the, uh, on the previous slide, if we said, what's the probability of A and B, you would just look at where A and B intersect, and you'd say 10 divided by 120, because there's a total of 120 in the table. So with the table, it's easy to answer and rules, okay? Okay. What we'll cover today is, you know, how do we answer these and questions when we don't have a table, okay? And so, uh, for example, we can say, you know, let's just say we are at the, uh, the airport. And we can say, you know, if there is a storm, the probability of a delay Is zero point seven. Mm. On the other hand, if there is no storm, there could still be a delay, and we will say the probability of a delay. is only 10% now. Okay. Let me just ask you how symbolically what would we write? If there is a storm the probability of a delay is 0.7. We would write probability of what given what? This is probability of delay given storm, right? And this is 0 0.7, okay? Over here, what would we write here? This is delay given no storm. And we'd say this is 0 0.1. Okay, and then so let's say, you know, you check the weather and we'll say the probability of a storm is, I don't know, 0 0.4, okay? So here we would write probability of a storm is 0 0.4. Okay, and now the question is, okay, what is the probability that there will be a storm and you will be delayed? So 
So this question is what is probability of storm and delay. Okay, so for this to happen, what has to happen? First, there has to be a storm. And then, if there is a storm, then there has to be a delay, right? So to answer this, I'm going to do, okay, first we're going to find the probability of a storm. And then once the storm has happened, I would multiply this by the probability of what? Delay given storm. Okay, so there has to be a storm. And then on top of being a storm, there also has to be a delay. Now there's a chance that there's no delay, but there's a chance that there is. So, so this becomes 0 0.4 times 0 0.7, and my answer is 0 0.28. Okay, I can generalize this into our multiplication rule. That's going to be probability of A and B is going to be equal to the probability of A times the probability of of B given A, okay, which is exactly what we have here. The probability of a storm and a delay is the probability of a storm times the probability of a delay given a storm. <coughs> is that okay? We can also represent this uh, graphically using what we call a probability tree. So let me uh, draw one of those for you guys. We can say okay, as far as the weather goes, there could be either a storm or no storm. And we said the probability that there's a storm is 0.4, which means the probability of no storm is going to be what? 0.6, right? Because they have to add up to 1. And then if there is a storm, then the flight can experience a delay, or it can be on time. We'll say no delay. Same thing. If there's no storm, there could be a delay still. There can also be no delay. And we said if there is a storm, the probability of a delay is what? 0.7, which means the probability of no delay would be 0.3. Okay? And if there's no storm, then there's still a chance of a delay, and that probability is what? 0.1, and the probability of no delay would then be 0.9. Okay? And we did our first thing. We said, what's the probability that there's a storm? And then there's a delay, so we went down and we did 0.4 times 0.7, and we got 0.28. All right. So this would be probability of storm and delay. Okay. Keep in mind that you know here I'll, I'll just label a few of these. This is storm, and then this 0.7, this is, this is a given conditional probability, right? It's delay given storm. So don't, don't mix these up, okay? And then over here, I could do 0.4 times 0.3 and get 0.12. This would be 0.6 times 0.1, 0 0.06, and 0.6 times 0.9, and we get 0.54. And all of these would add up to 1. And I suppose I could label all of these, but um, 
I guess I'll do that. All right, so this will be storm and no delay. And here we have probability of no storm and delay. And this is probability of no storm and no delay. Okay. And again, the kind of the, the guiding rule in all of this is that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. And so overall, I could also just ask, you know, what's the probability of a delay? Okay, and, what, and what would we add together to answer the question of what's the probability of a delay? Well, we have two outcomes that, where we experience delays, right? We have this outcome, this, here's a delay here, and here's a delay here. So we would take this number and we would add this number. Okay. So we would do 0 0.28 plus 0 0.06. Okay. So 0.28, this is storm and delay. That's one way we could be delayed. And there can also be no storm, but we still get delayed. So when we add these together, the overall probability of delay is 0 Good with everybody? Okay, so um, this can be um, expanded and we can say if we have independent events, okay? So if A and B are independent, then the probability of B given A is what? Equal to the probability of, of B, right? Okay. So if A and B are independent, then the probability of B given A is just equal to the probability of B. This is what we kind of said it means to be independent. All right, and so if we take our multiplication rule, so our multiplication rule was that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A, right? But if A and B are independent, then this reduces to just the probability of B, okay? Okay, and so now the probability of A and B, if they are independent, is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So this is kind of a special case if A and B are independent. All right, and so I think we're probably familiar, I think, with the, uh, so just a simple example. I flip a coin twice, what is the probability it lands heads on the first flip and heads on the second flip? And so what is the probability it lands heads on the first flip and heads on the second flip? So this is going to be the probability of heads on first and heads on the second. 
Okay. Coin flips are independent of each other, so this is just going to be the probability of heads on first flip times probability of getting heads on the second flip. Okay, because coin flips are independent. Otherwise, I would have to change the, uh, the second probability, right? The second probability, if it's different, if the first coin flip somehow affects the, uh, the second trial, then we would have to modify what this is over here. Okay. So in this case, probability of heads on the first is 0 0.5 times probability of heads on the second, 0 0.5, and therefore the probability that we flip a coin twice and it lands heads on the first and heads on the second, or simply it's just said, the probability that we get two heads after two flips is 0.25. So this is just probability of two heads after two flips. Okay. So far, so good? And then if you have a, a bunch of, a sequence of independent events, you know, okay, so if we have the, uh, the rule can be expanded, okay? So let's say, you know, A, B, C, and D are all independent of each other. then the probability of A and B and C and D which we can just write probability of A, B, C, D, okay? This is going to be the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C times the probability of D, okay? And, and so on and expanded to, you know, however, however many events that you have. Okay. This is, we just write this so we don't have to keep writing and every single time. Okay, so let's say we have a special coin And this special coin lands heads with probability 0.8. Okay, I forgot the uh, the clicker box today, but we'll uh, we'll pretend. <laughs> We'll pretend I'll I'll, uh, I'll put up a multiple choice question here. Okay, you can uh, kind of write down which uh, which number you think it is, or which 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 answer choice you think it is, and then you can talk to your neighbors and whatnot. Yeah, no no points actually awarded, but we'll say. Um... Okay, so we'll ask, um, what is the probability? I. Um... Oh, okay, let me just start. I flip the coin three times. Okay, well, what is the probability I get heads on the first and last and tails on the second flip? And we'll say your answer choices for this will be mm. okay. So go ahead and work that out.
So it lands heads with probability 0 0.8. You're going to flip the coin three times. What's the probability you get heads on the first and last flips and tails on the second flip? I don't know if you guys, maybe my handwriting's too poor. Professor? Yes. When you say heads on first and last flip, does that mean it needs to be on both first and last, or it be either or? It needs to be, because you're going to flip it three times, so you need first flip and last or third flip, OK? I guess not having the clicker really makes a difference here. All right, I apologize. OK, so the, the sequence of events has to really go. Uh, OK, so we'll just say the first flip, the second flip, and the third flip, right? OK, so it has to go heads, and the second one has to go tails, and the third one has to go heads, all right? What's the probability of heads on the first? 0.8, OK, each flip is independent, so and the probability of tails is going to be 0.2, and the probability of heads on the third is 0 0.8, okay? So we multiply all of this together, and we get 0.128. Okay, let's, uh, let me try and give you another one here, okay? We'll say we still have the special coin. Okay, so that means the probability of heads is 0 0.8, okay? And we'll say we flip the coin three times. And the question is, what is the probability you get We'll say you get tails at least one time. Okay, what's the probability you get tails at least one time? And your answer choices are Okay, go ahead and try that out, okay? This is, uh, what is the probability you get tails at least one time, at least? Okay, you can uh, discuss with your neighbors, see if you can figure this out. What is the probability you get tails at least one time? Our answer choice, our answer is C? Yeah? OK. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look at this, right? So what's the probability of getting tails at least one time? So the outcomes included in here is, you know, we um, get tails one time, OK? Or we get tails two times, or we get tails three times. And we actually haven't even learned how to calculate all of these things yet, OK? We'll, we'll learn this. This is, this is coming up uh, next. Not, not today, but uh, in chapter 6, OK? What we don't want, so this, any of these outcomes satisfy, any of these outcomes satisfy the thing of at least one tail. The only one that does not satisfy, okay, is we get tails zero times. Okay? 
And, uh, and here's an important rule, okay? Is that um, something happening zero times is the complement of it happening at least once. Okay, and you can think of any event, any event in your life, okay? And throughout your life, that event will happen at least one time in your life. At least one time, so it could happen one or more times, or it won't happen ever, okay? Whatever it is that you're thinking of, okay? Either that's going to happen to you, it will never happen to you, that's one possibility, or it will happen to you at least once, okay? Whatever you can think of, it's either going to happen at least one time or it's never going to happen. And, and so those happening zero times is the complement of happening at least once, okay? So when we ask, what's the probability that you get tails at least one time, that is the complement of getting tails zero times. So probability of at least one tail is going to equal 1 minus the probability of zero tails. Does that make sense? Okay. So what's the probability of getting zero tails? Well, this is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability of heads, then heads, then heads, right? I have to get heads three times in a row in order for me to get zero tails. So I do 1 minus 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, or 0 0.8 to the third. This gives me 1 minus 0.512. And that's my answer, 0 0.488. So that is, that's what we've got going on there. Okay, so I'll say um, this slide, I'll put a little star here. You might see a question like that on, uh, on tomorrow's quiz. And then uh, you might see a question like this. All right. Hmm. And then, yeah, I guess maybe something like this. All right. Let's uh, let's let's take a look at a, just a few more situations and kind of prime ourselves for what we might uh, encounter. Um, encounter. I, I want to uh, just kind of revisit this flight delay thing. Okay. This I will not quiz you on this. But, uh, but I do want to uh, revisit this. OK, so we're you know, revisiting this. And let's say um, you go to the airport to uh, pick up your friend, OK? Let's say this is in the days before um, before smartphones, right? So now you go to the airport, you can like track exactly when the flight's going to arrive. You can check the weather over, you know, in every city around the world and whatnot. But you know, back in the day, not possible, okay? But you know, um, when you go to the airport, you have these screens that say like the flight status, right? And it, okay, so let's say the flight is delayed. The flight has been delayed. Okay, and so now your question is, what is the probability there was a storm? Okay. And so this question is, what is the probability of, how would I write this? What's the probability of a storm if we know the flight has been delayed? So we would write the probability of storm given delay, right? Okay. Do you guys remember how we do uh, the probability of A given B? 
the probability of A given B, back in your notes, on the numerator I put the probability of what? And on the denominator I put what? So on the top I do A and B, and on the bottom I put B, right? Okay, so this is going to be probability of storm and delay. And I'm going to divide this by the probability of of delay. Yeah. Okay. So what goes in the numerator? Probability of storm and delay, what is that number? That's this one right here, right? Storm and delay. In the numerator, I put 0 0.28. And in the denominator, what's the probability of a delay? Right, we, we found this earlier and we did, this was 0.28 plus 0.06 to give me 0.34. We said there are two ways to get delayed. You can either be in a storm and be delayed or you can have no storm and still be delayed. So the probability of a delay in total is 0.34. Okay, and so, so if, uh, if we get to the airport and we see that the flight has been delayed, we can calculate the probability of a storm given the fact that there is a delay as 0 0.28 divided by 0 0.34. I need my calculator for this. Zero point eight two four. Is this okay? Yes, question. Could I could I have done um, could I have set up delay and no delay first and then storm? So it depends and uh, the way I presented the information to you we would not have been able to set up the uh, the chart that way. Okay? Because when I gave you the information I said the probability of a delay, if there's a storm, or I said if there's a storm, the probability of delay is 0.7, okay? So that's a conditional probability. And so if I just said, what's the question, probability of delay um, in the beginning, we would not have been able to answer that because at that point we only have conditionals for the probability of a delay given a storm. So we wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to set it up that way, okay? So anyway, this... This thing where we kind of rearrange our terms to, uh, to get our answer, this is known as using Bayes' rule, okay? It's, it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, I, I wish we could give it more attention, uh, but it's not even covered in the textbook, so, so I don't think it's fair for me to ask you guys questions about this on, on exams or stuff like that. But, um, but anyway, look it up, Bayes' rule. All right. So uh, good luck as uh, you guys take your quiz tomorrow, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday.